Secretary Blinken, um, I wanted to ask a little bit uh, more on the on the Gaza question. Um, coming to the G20 meetings last year, uh, you were able to kind of garner widespread support from members of the G20 um, with your position on Russia. Um, you know, even citing UN Charter principles um, that were being breached by the invasion of Ukraine. Um, this year, we got most of the members of the G20 are, are, or many members of the G20 are calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza uh, in contradiction with your own position, um, you know, highlighted by the fact that the US was, was forced to use a veto at the UN um, on that issue. So comparing the last year to this year, uh, is your support for Israel and its war leaving you isolated, uh, and has it put you on the back foot? Um, and in a related couple of points, um, there are continuing warnings over the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. Um, Deconfliction issues and looting are meaning trucks getting aid in uh, may get into Gaza, but they don't actually reach those in need. WFP has said it's suspending crucial food deliveries to the north of Gaza, and the UN assessment mission that you've spoken about uh, hasn't gone ahead. What are you doing to address uh, this dire situation? And um, can you say whether Israel is really doing all it can to cooperate with those efforts? Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jaime. So first, with regard to the UN Security Council resolution, uh, it's important to start with, the, with this clear fact and proposition. Uh, that resolution would not, in and of itself, resulted in a ceasefire. Um, the question before us is what is the most effective way to move forward, move forward in a way that gets hostages out, gets an extended humanitarian ceasefire, and ultimately leads to the end of the conflict. And in our judgment, uh, the best way to do that is to do exactly what we're doing right now, which is to work intensely on an agreement on the hostages. This is something I'm involved in virtually every single day, including here. Uh, alongside uh, my colleagues, the CIA director, uh, Bill Burns, uh, the White House Middle East coordinator, Brett McGurk. Uh, we're in constant communication and working every aspect of this because that is the quickest path, the most effective path, to get to where everyone wants to go, including everyone uh, at the G20. And as I said, uh, the Security Council resolution in and of itself would not produce that. And indeed, the concern that we had with this particular resolution was twofold. Uh, one was the fact that it was actually silent as to hostages. Uh, second, uh, the timing of it was such that at the very moment when, again, the best path forward is to see if we can reach an agreement on the hostages, anything that might um, in any way undermine that, confuse that, disrupt that effort is simply counterproductive to what everyone wants to achieve. Now. In terms of what people want to achieve, actually, we all share the same goals. Everyone wants to see an end to this conflict as soon as possible. Everyone wants to see an end to the suffering of children, women, and men uh, in Gaza, who so many innocents, who suffered and continue to suffer so terribly, who are caught in this crossfire of Hamas's making. We all want to see that uh, end as quickly as possible. And I think all of us are united in wanting to see after Gaza, the path forward to a genuinely durable, sustainable peace to make sure that this never happens again for Israelis and never happens again for Palestinians. So we're united in that. And again, in terms of some of the particulars, everyone supports trying to reach a, a hostage agreement. Everyone supports having an extended humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, to allow that agreement to go forward, as well as to dramatically increase humanitarian assistance. Everyone supports finding a way to end the conflict and move to this path to a durable uh, solution. So I found a lot of commonality on that. Now, we, again, there may be differences over, uh, over tactics, and there may be there differences over the Security Council resolution, but if we're trying to focus on actually getting results actually making a change, making a difference, we think what we're focused on is the, uh, the best way to do that. In terms of assistance getting in, what I can tell you is this. There are two things that are uh, a challenge. One is 
actually getting the assistance into Gaza. And here, this is something we've been working on pretty much every single day over the last uh, four months. And over time, we were able, first of all, to open the gates to start to allow assistance in. That was a product of our intense engagement in diplomacy. Then to expand the places through which assistance uh, was getting through, uh, as well as to expand the assistance itself. All of this has taken a lot of sustained work, but it's also accurate that every step along the way, we've encountered obstacles, we continue to encounter them, and we're dealing with them uh, virtually every day. Then, once assistance is inside of Gaza, that's not enough, because it actually has to get to the people who need it, and there too. There have been many obstacles that we're trying to work through every single day, including making sure that uh, convoys can proceed in a way that um, uh, ensures the safety of those who are um, conducting them, uh, and that means deconfliction, it means coordination, and that has been insufficient. Uh, so we're working on, uh, to improve that, as well as to make sure that, as you uh, pointed out, assistance gets not only to people throughout the southern part of Gaza, but actually gets to the many people who need it who remain in the north, some 350,000 people who remain above the Wadi Gaza. So uh, what I can tell you is this, we are working this quite literally every single day through our own envoy for assistance, uh, Ambassador David Satterfield and his team, through the work that uh, I and many others in the government are doing, engaging with the different institutions uh, of the United Nations, engaging with the Israeli government, with the Egyptians, with the Jordanians. Um, the bottom line is this, though. We need more aid to get in through more places to reach more people. That's the bottom line, and we want to make sure that uh, we deliver on that. Every single day, uh, we, uh, we're engaged when an issue arises. We, uh, we tackle it, and we look to see uh, that uh, there's an adequate response. So, you know, you can take this issue, issue by issue, obstacle by obstacle, but what we have seen is when we've brought up a problem that's, that's arisen, uh, generally speaking, yes, the, the Israelis have engaged it, but we continue to be in a situation where, again, not enough is getting in in the first place, and once it's in, it's not effectively getting to everyone who needs it. That has to be addressed. Final 